This is the book of Psalm, chapter 49, verse 12, and it reads, Nevertheless, man, being in honor, abideth not. He is like the beasts that perish. Psalm 49 and 20. Man that is in honor and understandeth not is like the beasts that perish. This is the book of 2 Peter 2 and 12. But these, as natural brute beasts, even our enemies, these so-called gods, these elites, these Edomites, this accursed people, the people of the Lord's curse, these sons of perdition, they're as natural brute beasts and they have made the majority of the world to go after their ways because of their lies and their deception. But let me read on in 2 Peter 2 and 12, I'll start from the top. But these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. And that's, that's exactly what it is. Right here in the Psalms, it's saying men that's an honor and don't understand it like the beast that perish. And then Peter backed it up with that very same narrative going into yeah, their natural brute beast made to be taken and destroyed. Speaking of things they don't even that they don't even understand and they shall utterly perish <laughs> in their own corruption. So with that, giving all praises, glory and honor unto Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father in whom the world is ignorantly called Jehovah or Yahweh. And Yahweh Shai is the name of his only begotten son in whom the world has ignorantly called Jesus Christ in whom we do worship. We are the Hebrew Israelites, which consist of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American and Seminole Indians to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings, giving double honors unto my apostles, my elders, and my teachers at Great Millstone that are ruling well and continue to do so. Salutations, peace, and blessings unto the hopeful elect, that house of David. To your brothers out there fighting this good fight of faith, keep it up. To your sisters doing that which is becoming of women, shalom. To those that are addicted unto this ministry, I say shalom. Lord's willing, you are edified with this lesson. This is part three of declared obsolete men or men while becoming spiritual men all right part three giving double honors unto my apostles and elders at great millstone that are ruling well and continue to do so salutations once again unto the hopeful elect the 144 the governing body and the rest of the one third consisting of women children helps of the prophets that large multitude wherever ye may be those ones is edifying unless you got satan on a car outside. <laughs> so you already know. Once you get the lesson started, then he won't come make his noise. But we're going to make more noise with this lesson. All right. Now, these are the two most important things you will ever know and could ever know. The name of the Heavenly Father and the name of his only begotten son. They're true and proper names in the ancient Paleo-Hebrew, our language. The Lashwan Kodash, which means holy tongue. Lashwan meaning tongue and Kodash meaning holy. Now, these be the names that are written. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Yah, meaning he. Hawa, meaning exists or is or is to be. He is. He exists. He, the existing one. For he is a rewarder of them that diligently seeks him. And in the name of his only begotten son, a name that is above every name given amongst men here on earth to the Israelite man first and also to the believer consisting of women, children, Helps of the prophets and those that have faith, even that name, even the mighty name, the name Yahawashai, Yah, meaning he, Yahawashai, meaning deliverer and savior. For that is exactly what he will come and do for the second time in physical form, yet as an angelic force. For we shall see him as he is, and we shall be like him. So let's get right into this. And we're going to read the same verse we just read, but in the uh, NLT. It says these false teachers are like unthinking animals, creatures of instinct, born to be caught and destroyed. They scoff at things they do not understand, and like animals, they will be destroyed. Woo! Man. So it's going into these false teachers, but who who's the ultimate false teacher? Who's the, the, the deceiver? The one that has caused the world to fall into deception. The earth is a uh, uh, is it uh gross darkness? Covers the earth. No, no, no. The, the earth is covered in darkness and gross darkness. The people who have done that, Esau, Edom, 
the self-proclaimed white man and his people, beginning with the high banking elite. And then they have uh, raised up uh, uh, low level guys, you know, men of the base of sort. All right. in these different uh, hidden uh, 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 lodges and, and communities and and uh, what do they call them? Uh, these secret societies to deceive people. They bring these certain people into power as mayors, governors, uh, congressmen, presidents, uh, 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 prime ministers, things of that nature. OK. And then even to the lower levels of, of these churches and all this other crap and then your school curriculum and all this other madness. But now they have pushed among the people that they are gods, that through their technology, through their A.I., they can ascend. But yet the Lord have risen up a balance against them. That's us beginning with our apostles and elders and their elders before them to speak the truth, that the truth that been so long without fruit shall be declared. We have breached the boundary of the gods, these so-called gods. OK, but they're destined to be destroyed, taken and be dis uh, taken to be destroyed. They're, uh, they are anathema. <laughs> Just as uh, you have the false uh, teachers and prophets among our people that that are considered in the Greek anathema. All right. These these so-called gods, these Edomites and these other heathen, they're they're higher upper echelon. They're considered anathema as well, which means uh, cursed. All right. A thing put uh, for sacrifice. So you have anathema, which means cursed or cursed thing, a set aside thing. All right, an animal for sacrifice, a thing to be destroyed. And then you have Maranatha, which means come Lord or until the Lord comes. So they're in that same category. All right. Now, this is Second Peter 2 and 13. And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it pleasure to ride in the daytime. Spot they or spots they are and blemishes sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. Now, this is going into those within the ministry, but even Esau Edom, he, he acts the part of, of, of being your friend and wanting to help humanity and, and all this other crap, but yet he wants to destroy you, right? Now, let's read in the NLT. Their destruction is their reward for harm they have done. They love to indulge in evil pleasures in broad daylight. It's Esau Edom. He, he uh, pushes out these things to the populace, the, uh, the PO, PORN industry, uh, his movies, his lies, his uh, documentaries on these different uh, channels, the History Channel, all this other crap. He wants to deceive you and throw you off the path, especially our people. But other people are talking about the goddamn universe and I want to manifest my destiny and, and AI and I'm going to become like a robot and all this other crap, man. I'm going to be a, a cyborg. He has pushed that out there for the people to believe that they can become something the more what they have been created. All right. But that's not possible. Only through Yahweh Bashim Shai are things possible. We're going to actually be changed. We're going to uh, fashion a body like unto our Lord's glorious body. That ain't going to happen for all people. We're going to be immortal. We're not going to be able to die anymore. That's only among Israel, beginning with the whole elect that house of David. All right, that's not going to happen for all people. But this man has uh, uh, deceived you into believing that that is achievable. Oh, and also, uh, this man has also lied about what is really written in the scriptures. Salvation is only for Israel, not for everyone. This man has pushed out that in his uh, his religion. But he ultimately wants one religion, one world religion, really is Satanism. To, to go after your own self, your own pleasures. But he knows in the end that that's going to ultimately lead to destruction but they don't actually really know they understand but they don't really know the lord has hardened this man's heart like pharaoh it says therefore destruction is their reward for the harm they have done they love to indulge in evil pleasures in broad daylight they are a disgrace and a stain among you they delight in deception even as they eat with you in your fellowship meals now this is a uh, going into those that came into the ministry, snuck in unawares, those that are hirelings. But Esau is doing what they're doing on the highest level possible. See, these are just some low-level guys, you know, changing up the doctrine, being bug outs, uh, uh, teaching his curriculum, 
uh, uh, change in laws, times and seasons, down to the congressmen, governors, state officials, presidents. But these uh, elites, these so-called gods are doing it on a higher level. All right, because they want to uh, 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 control the narrative. They want to control everything. And we know that they're coming for us because we know the truth. And that's a dangerous thing in the mouth of them that speak and in the ears of them that will hear. That is a very dangerous thing. Now, let's go to the book of Psalm 31 and 11. Then I'm going to get another Psalm of David where he's praying against these demons. All right, these so-called gods. Now, this is Psalm 31. And uh, we're going to go to verse 11. And it reads, I was a reproach among all mine enemies, but especially among my neighbors. You see that? Because we're standing up. Our people despise us and hate us. We're despising the generation of thy children <laughs> in this generation. But yet, in this very same generation, it is a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Okay? Standing up. Who shall stand uh, uh, up for me against the evildoers and those that work iniquity? The elect, beginning with that governing body, the men that are going to sing this new song, preach this word, cast down imaginations, subdue kingdoms through faith, remove mountains, just as Yahweh Bashim Shai have taught us. Now, this is Psalm 31 and 11. I was a reproach among mine enemies, but especially among my neighbors, and a fear to mine acquaintance. They that did see me without fled from me. Yeah, because we've been left alone. Just like my man Trunks is walking out of that hyperbolic time chain. We got the light glowing behind us. But it's like, hey, man, everybody's fleeing away because they think, all right, man, you're going to get yourself in a lot of trouble. But we are, we're no longer, no longer under that fear of death, that all our lifetime we were in bondage under it. We no longer fear what this man can do, as Yahweh Shai stated. Fear not a man that can destroy body only, but, but fear him that can destroy his soul and body in hell. And this is hell, a condition. It says, I am scorned by all my enemies and despised by my neighbors. Even my friends are afraid to come near me. When they see me on the street, woo, come on. That's, hey, that's us. And hey, we on the street. Hey, that's it. They run the other way. Woo, that's a... Uh, that was a perfect uh, uh, rendition on in the NLT. We're literally on the streets. <laughs> and people we know, <laughs> they run from us, man, because the light is too great. The truth that has been so long without fruit shall be declared, and faith shall flourish. How about that? Now let's go to the book of uh, Psalm 27, because soon they're going to send their armies against us, but we're going to stand against them through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Ashai. It says, uh, Psalm of fearless trust in Yahweh. Verse 1, a psalm of David. The Lord Yahweh, Bashim Shai, is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord Yahweh, Bashim Shai, is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Woo, man, NLT. The Lord is my light and my salvation. So why should I be afraid? The Lord Yahweh, Bashim Shai, is my fortress, protecting me from danger. So why should I tremble? Verse two, when the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes came up, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. <laughs> yeah. And literally it's going to be uh, cannibalism. They're going to literally want to eat our flesh. But ultimately, it's the energy that, that the Lord has put into us, his spirit. They want to eat that up. They want to uh, extinguish that flame, that, that light that the Lord told us to shine before men. So that they may glorify the Father. We're going to let our light so shine. It's just like my man Jones is walking out of that hyperbolic time chain with the light shining behind him. Okay. It says, when evil people come to devour me, when my enemies and foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. It says, though an host, verse 3, though an host should encamp against me as they're going to send their soldiers, sleeper cells, super soldiers, robots, droids. Everything they have, they're going to send against us. But we will not be afraid because the Lord is our mighty protection, our shield, our strong stay in the day of trouble. It says, no one host should encamp against me. My heart, which is your mind, shall not fear. The war should rise against me. In this will I be confident. Confidence goes back to uh, uh, 
a compound word in the French, con, which, which means with, fidance, means faith, confidence. So with faith, we're going to go with faith because through faith, as we read in Hebrews 11, our forefathers through faith subdued kingdoms. It says, though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart, your mind will not be afraid. Even if I am attacked, I will remain confident. Ooh, man. Hey, verse four. One thing have I desired of the Lord, Yahweh Bashimashai, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord, Yahweh Bashimashai, and to inquire in his temple, in LT. The one thing I ask of the Lord, Yahweh Bashimashai, the thing that I seek most is to live in the house of the Lord, to be with the Lord, to have the Lord live in us, as Yahweh Shai stated in his prayer, that we may be one in him as he is one in the father that we may be one in them and they be they may be one in us you see that so that's exactly what we desire just like david because no longer is uh the standing temple that was once built the first by solomon the second by the prophets but those two temples were destroyed and thrown down so now the temple is us our bodies and the lord is going to dwell within us all right he's going to make his uh, uh dwelling Amongst men, all right, the, the flock of his pasture are men, all right, the men of Israel, okay? And then the Lord is going to be in all in all through all his people in time to come, beginning with the hopeful elect, that house of David. But first, you had to take action, and that's exactly what we're doing against these high banking elite, taking action. But let's read it out. It says, the one thing I ask of the Lord, Yahweh, Bashim Shah, the thing I seek most is to live in the house of the Lord, Yahweh. Bashim Shah, all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Shah's perfections and meditating in his temple. Woo. That's ultimately the kingdom. And ultimately, there's going to be that new body that the Lord is going to grace us with. But first, we have breached the boundary of the gods because just like Esau, Edom on a carnal sense wants to transcend and get to a point of immortality, which he will not. We're uh, uh, going down the very same path, but on the righteous side. In the spiritual sense, in reality, it was really about to happen that what we cannot do, Yahweh Bashimashai can do. And that's exactly what the Lord is going to do. That's why we're not going to be afraid of these armies. We're not going to be afraid of these men. We're not going to be afraid of king or tyrant. We're not going to be afraid of none at all. But Yahweh Bashimashai, that's who we fear. But I'm going to um, play this clip. Shalom. Since I'm already considered a sinner, let me complete the last one that remains. We never angered the gods. They've always hated us. What evil did we do to deserve to live in this rotten world? Since the day I gained conscious, I haven't had one peaceful day. War after war, fight after fight. We live in constant fear of having to dig up our next loved one. And all because we did everything we could to protect our planet no matter what. Yes, I breached the boundaries of the gods because they never intended to make this world a better place. They filled it with hateful mortals just to see it rot. I stopped hoping for someone else to come fix my problems. I did what anybody in my place would have done. I decided to take action. And since I'm already considered a sinner, let me complete the last one that remains. Ooh, that's it. That's it. Because in the eyes of Esau, Edom, we're the problem, but really he's the problem. He's going to be ridden out of the earth soon enough. Now let's go to the book of Ezra. And this is why, because it's already on the books that he knows who we are and what we are as a people and what we shall become. And he's mad at that, but it's all good. Call all your law, y'all, but my shot. And since we're already considered a sinner in his, in his laws, according to his penal code, according to his, you know, it said that we that departed from evil have made ourselves a prey. So we're considered uh, 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 a transgressor of his law, not the transgressor of the law, but a transgressor of his law, because that's what uh, sin means. That's the definition of sin is the transgression of the law of the scriptures of the laws that were given to Moses to give to the children of Israel. But according to Esau, Edom, he has his own uh, Ten Commandments, his own laws. And if you break that, then he's going to put you to death and. Uh, uh, you're going to be outside the grid. You're going to be uh, in no man's land. Are right, you going to be outside uh, the jurisdiction off grid, so to speak? 
But that's good enough for us because Yahweh Bashamasha is our guy. And he's going to be the guide of them that keep his commandments. All right. So let me get uh, Ezra 4 and 19. Because this is in the writings of even Esau Edom. This was in the writings of the past of the Persians and Medes. But it's in the writings even here and now because they know about our people. They know about us. Okay, and how our laws are contrary to all men. Now, this is uh, Ezra 4, 19. I, and I commanded, and search have been made, and it is found that this city, going into our city, Jerusalem, of old time have made insurrection against kings, and that rebellion and sedition have been made therein. NLT, I ordered a search of the records, and I found that Jerusalem has indeed been a hotbed of insurrection against many kings. In fact, rebellion and revolt are normal there. Why? Because our law is contrary to all men. They want us to bow to them and worship them and go after them and do as they do. But no, we have to keep the ways of our power. And even though the majority of our people have fallen off, they're still the people of the Lord at the end of the day. Even, in, even after they die, they're going to come back and be good. <clears throat> but the elect, the Lord has always saved the remnant that was going to fight against all that is uh coming all right just like during the time of the tower of babel all the nations had one language they were building that tower to the heaven to defy the heavenly father if he were to bring a, a great flood again which they're idiots because the lord promised that he wasn't going to flood the earth anymore by the rainbow he made that promise to the creation that he wouldn't do it again now he can flood certain parts of the world but he ain't gonna flood the whole earth as he did but these stupid people don't understand that so they try to build the tower, but you already know our forefathers during that time was standing against it. That's why the language, the pure language, the Lashwan Kadash, the holy tongue, uh, remained. And the name of the Heavenly Father remained throughout the ages from that time on down through our facts at, to our forefather Abraham, who was Abram before his name was changed to Abraham. All right? And he had the name of the Father because all the nations knew Yahweh as Alashadia, which is a uh, uh, power almighty. Allah meaning power, Shadia meaning almighty, to the nations a demon-like, which demon just means higher intelligence, demon-like terrible power. And that's exactly what our Lord was to these, these damn uh, uh, beasts. There's these low, lower life forms, all right? And it reads, verse 20, there have been mighty kings also over Jerusalem, which have ruled over all countries beyond the river, and toll, tribute, and custom was paid unto them. Woo! Man, since powerful kings have ruled over Jerusalem and the entire province west of the Euphrates River, receiving tribute, customs, and tolls. Verse 21, give ye now commandment to cause these men to cease and that this city be not builded until another commandment shall be given from me. You see that? Therefore, issue orders to have these men stop their work. That city must not be rebuilt except at my express command. See, they want us to stop the building, but come on now. We're going to keep on going. It says, uh, verse 22, take heed now that ye fail not to do this. Why should damage grow to the herd of the kings? It says, now when the copy of King Artaxerxes' letter was read before Rehum and Shimshai, the scribe, and their companions, they went up in haste to Jerusalem unto the Jews and made them to cease by force and power. Whew. And that's exactly what they're going to try to do. But look how cold Yahweh Shemashah is. We're doing this spiritually while everything is being built, while everything is being set up, while they're uh, building towards their NWO. We're building this new temple, the third temple through the spirit, the temple of the Lord, the temple that he said he was going to build in three days, which is his body. His body is the, is the, the collection of the believers, the congregation, the Israelites. How about that? Call him la. So when we do cease, it's going to be through the command of the Lord to stop preaching that the, the, the building is done, that all the stones fitly framed are joined one to another, connected to the cornerstone, which the builders refuse, and that cornerstone being Yahweh Shai Mashiach, and our foundation is built upon the apostles and prophets, and Yahweh Shai being that cornerstone. The temple is built, so there ain't going to be no stopping. It is a, is a, it is at completion. Call Ayyumlah Yabash Mashai. 
It says, be diligent and do and don't neglect this matter, for we must not permit the situation to harm the king's interests. All right. It says when this letter from King Artaxerxes was read to Rehum and Shimshai, their colleagues, they hurried to Jerusalem and their colleagues, they hurried to Jerusalem. Then with the show of strength, they forced the Jews to stop building. All right. So it ceased until the, the days of Darius. But it's all good because they're going to come with force to to try to stop us from achieving what is already promised unto us. But at that time, the Lord is going to lift up a standard against them. All right. So we had on time. Not bad. All right. Let's go to the book of Job. Job 22. 10. And it reads. Therefore, snares are round about thee, and sudden fear troubleth thee, Esau Edom, you high banging elite, you, you so called gods, right? Snares have taken hold on you, sudden fear troubleth thee. And this is the NLT, that is why you are surrounded by traps and tremble from sudden fears. Man, or darkness that thou canst not see. An abundance of waters cover thee. Yeah, because what are those waters? Even the knowledge of the Heavenly Father shall cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Woo! How about that? Call Ayyumlah, Yah Bashimashai. Is not Yahweh Bashimashai in the height of heaven? And behold, the height of the stars. How high they are. Yahweh Bashimashai is so great, higher than the heavens, higher than the farthest stars. And thou sayest, how doth Yahweh know? Bashim al Shai, can he judge through the dark cloud? <laughs> yeah, he gonna judge you, you damn demons, man. But you reply, that's why Yahweh can't see what I am doing. How can he judge through the thick darkness? The Lord sees the light and the darkness is one to him. Okay? Uh, 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 let me get that scripture where it said, He that made the eye shall he not see. Made, made the eye. You know, you 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 elites are bugged out. You're not really smart. You're, you're very bugged out. <laughs> you, you're simple as hell. You got all this money and all this power, and you're still weak. You're nothing. All right, this is Proverbs 20 and 12. The hearing ear and the seeing eye. Yahweh Shemashah have made even both of them. You see? So the Lord made both. Shall he not see? Let me see. Shall he not see? So I can he. Not see, Lord sees all, man. <laughs> you dudes, you're, you're gonna lose. Yes, I breached the boundary of the gods because they never intended to make this world a better place. Fight after fight, battle after battle. Okay, we're always living in fear to dig up a loved one, but soon that's gonna be over. We're gonna say, Oh, grave, where is thy uh, a victory? Oh, death, where is thy sting? We're gonna say that as a people, only us. Now, this is our Job 20 and 17 going to you high banking elite. You ain't going to be able to indulge in the kingdom. You're going to be slaves and servants in the kingdom. You're going to build up our kingdom and you're going to bury the bodies. That's going to be your first job to replenish the earth. This is Job 20 and 17. He shall not see the rivers, the floods, the brooks of honey and butter. And that's going into the kingdom of heaven because our land is known as the land flowing with milk and honey, which means it's of abundance. It's fruitile, fertile lush okay that's how the earth is going to be it's going to be uh converted back to eden eden which means uh paradise idan <laughs> man psalm 89 and 48 is for you high banging elites what man is he that liveth and shall not see death shall he deliver his soul from the hand of the grave say the lot but we know that israel is going to be able to to transcend to be changed in a, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, it says, he that planted the year, this is Psalm 94 and 9, he that planted the year, shall he not hear? He that formed the eye, shall he not see? Come on, man. Come on. You, you tripping, E. You bugging out. He that chastiseth the heathen, shall he not correct? He that teaches man knowledge, shall not he know? Come on, now. 
It says, he punishes the nations. Won't he also punish you? He knows everything. Doesn't he also know what you are doing? <laughs> you see? Now, we're going to move on to the book of 2 Samuel 22, 21. So like, yeah. Here we go. It says, the Lord, Yahweh Bashimashah, reward, rewarded, rewarded, yeah, rewarded me. Yahweh Bashimashah rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands, hath he recompensed me. You see that? Because we, we did what was right. So the Lord's going to recompense us, man. If we had done what anyone else in our position would have done, take action. And we had a sw the sword of the spirit, even the word of the heavenly father to smite through you, uh, High banking elite, you so called gods, ye, you mere mortals. Disappoint them, O oh Lord. Make them to know themselves to be but men. All right? Says the Lord, Yahweh Bashimashah rewarded me for doing right. He restored me because of my innocence. Woo! That's it. Call our Yimla. We're seeing a sin in, a, in your society, Esau Edom, but not before the Heavenly Father because the blood of Mashiach covers us. So, we're free. And the blood of Mashiach speaketh better things than that of Abel. All right, even though uh, when Cain killed Abel, Cain thought it was over. Like, man, he gone. He out. He out of there. Lord confronted his ass. Where's your brother? Well, am I my brother's keeper? Lied directly to the Lord, really to the prophets. And the Lord cursed his ass out like, you threw, clown. I know where your brother is. His blood even cries unto me. How much more the blood of Mashiach cries to Yahweh Bashimah Shai. Or uh, cries to Yahweh. And now, and now Yahweh Shai having that, that uh, given all judgment, he hears the cries of the souls of the just that transfer back into the spirit realm where he is, and even us upon the earth that cry out. Our spirits utter things that can't even be expressed. And the Lord is going to avenge us speedily. All right? We cry day and night unto him. Yahweh Bashim El Shai, and you will be destroyed. Esau, Edom. You will not live out half your days. And this is the book of Job 34, 33. Most likely we're gonna end it in uh we'll end it on Maccabees. We'll end it in the book of Maccabees uh two. But this is Job 34 and 33, and it reads, Should it be according to thy mind, O Esau Edom, Yahabashim Shai? All right, should it be according to your mind, O Edom? Yahabash Mashai is, is telling you something. Yahabash Mashai is, 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 is asking you a question, devil. Just like <laughs> through the prophets, he was, he cursed out Cain. Like, where's your brother? The fuck is going on, man? It was, what's, what's all this? <laughs> Just like the Lord came down to see the tower, all right, through the angels. Like, what the fuck are they doing here? You know? During the time of Nimrod, trying to do the same thing that bug out did. He didn't succeed. So you really think you're going to succeed? Nah, you're through. You're bugged out. You're out of there. You're done. You're beasts. You, you, you're worse than the beast that perished because you understand not. It says, should it be according to thy mind? O Esau, Edom. He will recompense it. Who? Yahabash Mashah. Whether thou refuse woo, or whether thou choose. And not I. Therefore, speak what thou knowest. See, must Yahweh Bashim Shai tailor his justice to your demands? But you have rejected him. The choice is yours, not mine. Go ahead, share your wisdom with us. <laughs> See who's going to help your clown ass out, man. <laughs> See who's going to help you, devil. It's not. You're through. You're bugged out. You're ugly. You had like seven heart transplants. You're through. But yet, yeah, uh, Jake been getting vaccinated since they was babies. We still had the same heart we had since we was, we was small children. And Jake still is here. You see? Especially um, those of us that came to the truth, we've gotten even better. Okay? <clears throat> we we returned to uh, the dietary laws to the best of our ability. We eat the best of the worst in this society. We pray over everything before we consume it. And the Lord makes it holy, makes it good. But not anything and everything, like certain unlawful meats, we don't bless that. Should I pray for this? No. 
We just don't touch it. We, we, we eat that which is lawful, even though in this society we're eating our bread defiled among the Gentiles, the heathen. So we pray over all of it so that it may be made good for us, even in this time. Because if we really knew everything that was in the food we eat, uh, uh, we wouldn't eat. And man has to eat to sustain himself and drink. So there's only so much we can do. But Yahweh Mashiach is, is lighting our way. Okay. That's it. Um, moving on. Let's go to the book of Proverbs. 11 and uh, 31. Thirty-one, And it reads, Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth, much more the wicked and the sinner. It says, if the righteous are rewarded here on earth, what will happen to wicked sinners? What is going to happen to you, Esau, Edom? The self, you self-proclaimed white men, people, your Amalekites, which the Lord is going to go to war with you from generation to generation. And I believe this is it. You're coming to the end of your road, O fugitive and vagabond. You've been moving around long enough, and the Lord has pinpointed and knows where you are. He knows where you uh, uh, were going to go because he dispersed you there. He drove you there, just like uh, he drove Israel to the four corners of the earth. He said, to the, uh, wherever I have driven thee, I will bring thee back with a mighty hand going into the elect. But the Lord have driven you, Esau, Edom, to the far reaches of the earth. And he knows exactly where you are. And even you high banking elite, hiding in your bunkers, the Lord knows exactly where you are. You think you can hide? The Lord knows where you are. He wants you to believe that <laughs> you're safe, but you're not. We know exactly who you are, what you are, and where you are, because you're through. Now let's go to the book of Luke 14. 14. I'm going to play this clip back. And it reads, And thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee. For thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. See, Esau, Edom, whatever you have to offer society, these people, and those of our people that's going to take your madness and be destroyed anyway, you can't offer us what the Lord has already promised, what is already rightfully ours. You can't. Give us that. It says, then at the resurrection of the righteous, Yahweh Bashimah shall reward you for inviting those who could not repay you. All right, going into the uh, the one third. They can't repay. With even what uh, our apostles and elders have done for us, our spiritual parents. We can't repay them for the things, but since we believe we shall surely receive a prophet's reward and we heard it from righteous men, we shall surely receive a righteous man's reward. All right, the men, the men that you see in here, to the women that believe, the elect ladies, to the, to our children being blessed that we either have now or will have, they are blessed. They will receive a recompense at the resurrection of the just when Yahweh returns. And the ultimate gift is those bodies, us not being able to die, us not having an evil, wicked thought, us seeing the reward of the wicked with our eyes. Woo. That's enough for us. That's enough for me. I know that's enough for you also. And this is the book of Romans. Let's go to Romans 12 and 17. And it reads, Recompense to no man evil for evil, because that's what Esau Edom wants to do. But we all we have to do is wait, because you're going to be destroyed anyway, Esau. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. So when we're out and about among our enemies, we move so cold and collected. It, it has fear to fall upon our enemies, just like how David was moving wisely in all his ways. Saul feared him because Saul knew the Lord was with him. And this is an Israelite. This is a fellow Israelite who knows the power of the Lord because the Lord took his spirit from him and gave him an evil spirit. How much more the nation of people that the Lord is not dealing with. Will you not fear the power, the might, the favor, the protection that Yahweh Shai has over his people, especially the hopeful elect, that house of David, that even the weakest among us shall be as David in that day? Will you not fear? It says, never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Because we know, just like David told Saul when he was hunting him, uh, uh, and all the heathen knew uh, of David defeating Goliath, all right, that, that warrior, 
that giant that beat down the boast and the Goliath with the stone and the sling, all right? The people are going to know, like, damn, these men are honorable, okay? And all we're going to tell you elites, like, we ain't got to touch you. We already know your fate. You through. All we're going to say is this, to you and your people, may the Lord judge between us and you. And we already know the judgment of the Lord that shall fall upon you. Fire and brimstone shall be scattered upon your habitation. And great fear is going to fall upon you elites. You know why? Because you're going to say, let the rocks fall on us to hide us from him that sitteth on the throne, even Yahweh, and from the wrath of the Lamb, Yahweh Shai. Let's play this. We never angered the gods. They've always hated us. What evil did we do to deserve to live in this rotten world? Since the day I gained conscious, I haven't had one peaceful day. War after war, fight after fight. We live in constant fear of having to dig up our next loved one. And all because we did everything we could to protect our planet no matter what. Yes, I breached the boundaries of the gods because they never intended to make this world a better place. They filled it with hateful mortals just to see it rot. I stopped hoping for someone else to come fix my problems. I did what anybody in my place would have done. I decided to take action. And since I'm already considered a sinner, let me complete the last one that remains. Ooh, I love how he always goes for that sword. Bro. That's, that's all we bring out is the sword of the spirit. Which is the word of Yahweh. We never angered the gods. They've always hated us. What evil did we do to deserve to live in this rotten world? That's right. It's a rotten world. <laughs> what did he deserve to live in this rotten world? But like the elder high priest Yaiquab would say, we had to uh, see wickedness to appreciate righteousness to make us true gods. We had to know both sides. So praise ye the Lord. Because at first we had the same question, just like my man Trump's. But we really, Ezra had those uh, same questions, the questions that any of us would have. Why, Lord, is the heathen reigning? If we're your people, why do we not have a possession in the world? This world is, is made for many, but the world to come for few. Uh, the, Lord have, have had, um, the Lord has been fair in giving these heathens a chance and a time to reign, but they have done evil and wickedness. And the Lord is going to bring them down and he's going to raise up his people. And he's going to give us a great king to reign over us forever. As long, as long as the sun and moon endure, shall praises be made of him, even Yahweh Shah HaMashiach, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and unto him our King David, who shall be a prince over the nation forever. All right, and Yahweh Shah shall forward his throne, and with uh, him the rest of the twelve, and beyond them the, the 144,000, the governing body, and then beyond them is the one-third, and through that uh, one-third, uh, the two-thirds, and the rest of our nation is going to come back and we're going to be as the stars of heaven and as the sand upon the seashore. And the promise of Yahweh Bashim Hashai shall be fulfilled in that time and it shall be uh, brought to pass and all Israel shall be saved and all my people shall be righteous. Boom. There you go. Okay. Hmm. We're going to jump from there to Second Thessalonians. One and six, because it's coming. Uh, Second Thessalonians one and six. Seeing it is a righteous thing with Yahweh, Bashim al to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. NLT, in his justice, he will pay back those who persecute you. <whistles> Sit. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Yahweh Shai shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, NLT, and Yahweh will provide rest for you who are being persecuted. And also for us, when the Lord Yahweh Shai appears from heaven, he will come with his mighty angels. Verse 8, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not Yahweh and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. NLT, in flaming fire, bringing judgment on those who don't know Yahweh and on those who refuse to obey the good news of our Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, that he's going to reign, he's going to reign forevermore. Verse 9, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. NLT, they will be punished with eternal destruction, forever separated from the Lord and from his glorious power. Esau, Edom. You high banking elites and even the elites of you other nations are going to be getting a, 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 
getting your tails handed to you. But after that thousand and after just generations after generations of an ass whooping, you other heathen are going to know because you're going to have your own uh, uh, ruling classes, but they're always going to be subject to uh, Israel because as is written, uh, their king shall be our nursing fathers and their queens because there's queens among you other nations. There ain't no queens in Israel. There's princesses, daughters of, of, of kings, princesses, and wives of, of, of kings, lords, which makes them ladies. Because a lady uh, means a wife of a lord. Okay? That's all that's going to be in Israel. And your kings and your queens are going to be uh, a servants unto us forever. Esau, Edom, you're going to be eradicated. Your your root and your branch, your, your whole family line, your tree is going to be uprooted and, and cast out of the earth. And that land of Edom will be given unto Judah. All right? The so-called Negro. All right? And that's... Let's see. Now let's read verse, verse 10. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints, the Israelites, and to be admired in all them that believe the elect, because our testimony, which was the spirit of prophecy, the testimony of Yahweh Shai, among you was believed in that day. Verse 10, NLT. When he comes on that day, he will receive glory from his holy people. Praise from all who believe, and this includes you, for you believed what we told you about him. Woo, man. That's it. Let's go to the book of Hebrews. 10 and 30. Let me read, brothers. Okay, there we go. It says, for we know him that have said, vengeance belongeth unto me. Our recompense, saith the Lord, Yahweh. Bashimashai, and again, the Lord, Yahweh Bashimashai, shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. You see how cold the Lord is? He may just lure us with his power embedded in us. Uh, uh, he's going to make his signs to be wrought through us, just as he did for Moses and Aaron. He told Moses, I'm going to make you a god before Pharaoh, and I'm going to make Aaron your prophet, because the prophets have power. And they had miraculous, uh, uh, miraculous abilities, man. Okay, to do wondrous things. But how much more being made a god in the presence of these so-called gods? All right, just as Pharaoh thought he was a god king or whatever, but the Lord made Moses a god before Pharaoh, and made Aaron his prophet to say before things. That's powerful. To speak something and it comes into existence. That's power. All right. But we have, we, we have been declared obsolete men while being made spiritual men. How about that? Because Esau, according to him, the state has declared that there is no God. And then we're going to be like my man Wordsworth. You cannot erase God with an edict. There is a God. <laughs> okay. Man, that's it. So there you go. He said, the, the, the state has no use for your kind. All right, brothers, check out that episode of Twilight Zone, uh, uh, The Obsolete Men. All right? The, our apostles and elders put us on to that. It's, it's a wonderful episode, man. It, it really builds up your faith because, you know, in the in the clip, words where he's really reading the script, he's like, all right, for the last few moments of my life, let me just read the Bible. That's all I want. So, but us understanding the truth of the, of the scriptures, oh, man, it makes you really walk. Uh, uh, with with uh, uh, humility and and uh, and uh, and uh, favor and, and uh, appreciation, you know, because you know what the Lord is going to do for us. And this is uh, Hebrews ten and thirty NLT. For we know the one who said, "I will take revenge; I will pay them back." He also said, "The Lord Yahweh will judge His own people." See, He don't need you devils to do nothing. He gonna do. He gonna judge his own people. It is a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Man, gaze and stop. There we go, y'all. Going right into what I wanted. All right, we're gonna read it on. Read it on out. It's Hebrews ten, and thirty two. But call to remembrance the former days in which, after you were illuminated, brought to the truth, 
ye endured a great fight of afflictions. NLT, think back on those early days when you first learned about Mashiach. Remember how you remained faithful, even though it meant terrible suffering. Partly whilst you were made a gazing stock, both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly whilst you became companions of them that were so used. And that goes into, that links with Isaiah 59 and, uh, and 15. Let me get that real quick. We're going to jump back to that. Isaiah 59, 15. We've uh, made ourselves a prey. 59, we had on time. Not bad, all right? About to close out anyway. Um, the Lord's one, this has been edifying. Uh, Isaiah 59. In uh, 15, and it reads, Yeah, truth faileth, and he that departed from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it, Yahweh Shemashah saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. Yeah, truth is gone, and anyone who renounces evil is attacked. The Lord Yahweh Shemashah looked and was displeased to find there was no justice. And he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his arm brought salvation unto him, which is the heavenly host, and his righteousness, it sustained him. All right, because the Lord is going to send his right hand, even Yahweh Shai, to put things right. All right, and then just like at the top, the clip is paused on on uh, just one eye. We, we have our eyes single, and we know who our enemies are now. Esau, Edom, the high bank and elite, Amalekites, the heathen. All right, our enemies. He was amazed to see that no one intervened to help the oppressed, our people. So he himself stepped in to save them with his strong arm, the heavenly host, and his justice sustained him. That's it. Call all you Yahweh Mashai. Sustained us through long, dark nights, peril, and loss. Okay. Let's go to the book of Job real quick. Job 31. 34. So like you, <laughs> so like you, 34. And it reads, did I fear a great multitude or did the contempt of families terrify me that I kept silence and went not out of the door? Yeah, we, we stepped out of our comfort zone. We stepped out of this world to face you so-called gods. All right, we did what anyone else in our position would have done to take action, all right? This is uh, NLT. Have I feared the crowd or the contempt of the masses so that I kept quiet and stayed indoors? Oh, that one would hear me. Behold, my desire is that the Almighty would answer me and that mine adversaries had written a book. If only someone would listen to me, look, I will sign my name to my defense. Let the Almighty answer me. Let my accuser write out the charges against me. That's right. You devils write out the charges you have against us and see who's going to stand. Who will the Lord hear, you or us? Let the Lord judge between us and you. And we're going to see. It says, surely I would take it upon my shoulders and bind it as a crown to me. Yeah, we would let no man take our crown. Now we already have it as ours and only ours. It says, I would face the accusation proudly. I would wear it like a crown. I would declare unto him the number of my steps as the prince. As a prince, would I go near unto him. For I would tell him exactly what I have done. I would come before him like a prince. And we are the princes of the power. Yahasha Allah. Yah meaning he, prince. Uh, Shah meaning prince. Allah meaning power. Yahasha Allah. Israel. Yahasha Allah. Yah meaning he. Shah meaning prince. Allah meaning power. We're going to step to the Lord as the prince. Princes of the power. Because through Yahweh Shah, we have access to the throne. To step boldly before the throne. Because we're covered in the blood of Mashiach. Now let's go to the book of Psalm 101 real quick. And we're going to go back to that Hebrews, but let me get these scriptures real quick. Psalm 101 and 8. And it reads, I will early destroy all the wicked of the land. Let me read that again. I will early destroy all the wicked of the land that I may cut off all wicked doers from the city of the Lord. Yahweh by Shema Shai, because there's evil doers in the city of the Lord, in the, in the land of the Lord right now. We will early destroy all the wicked of the land. All right. My daily task will be to ferret out the wicked. 
and free the city of the Lord from their grip. Woo! Woo That's cool. All right, let's go to Psalm 104 <clears throat> and 35. And it reads, let the sinners be consumed out of the earth and let the wicked be no more. Blessed thou the Lord, Yahweh Bashimah Shah, with my soul. Praise ye the Lord, Yahweh Bashimah Shah. Let all sinners vanish from the face of the earth. Let the wicked disappear forever. Let all that I am praise Yahweh Bashimah Shah. Praise Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. That's it. Now we're going to go back to Hebrews. Not bad. All right, cool. We're going to go back to Hebrews. <clears throat> Finish that out. And then we're going to jump to the Apocrypha, and we're going to close out. But before that, let me go to Hebrews <clears throat> 2 and 14 real quick. Uh, yeah. Bear with me. Hebrews, okay, 2. We're going to go to 14 and, and read 14 and 15. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had power of death that is the devil you see that because this is the the ultimate uh uh shackle that's being broken through our lord yahweh shai this, these shackles these chains are broken from off our minds and from off our our, our uh our actual uh bodies like yeah we know we're, we're feeble and weak but through our weakness the strength of the lord is made manifest as is uh this is hebrews 2 and 15, and delivered them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. But now we're free. It says only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. You see that? Yes, I've breached the boundary of the gods. Okay? Because gods don't die, right? So there you go. Call Ayimla, Yahweh Bashim We're going to go to back to Hebrews. Hebrews 10. It's going to go down to the point. All right. So like you. Boom. There we go. Yep. This is Hebrews 10 and 34. But ye had compassion of me and my bonds and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in, ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, with, which hath great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, which is suffering, that after ye have done the will of Yahweh, Bashim Hashai, ye might receive the promise. Woo. Might receive, but hey, that's why we got to fight. Keep fighting, keep fighting, keep fighting. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry, even Yahweh Shai. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, two-thirds, fallouts, my soul, the soul of Yahweh Bashim Hashai, which lives forever, shall have no pleasure in him, whoever falls away, whoever turns away or turns back. But we are not of them that draw who draw back, Salakia, unto perdition, because we're not with these sons of perdition. We're not with these so-called gods. We don't bow to them. We bow unto Yahweh Bashim Hashai. It says, but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Barakatai Yahweh. Bashim Yahweh Shai. Now let's jump up out of there. We're going to go here. Before I get Maccabees, let me get uh, Prayer of Azariah real quick. Prayer of Azariah 1. I'm going to start at verse 7. I'm going to read down to 22. I'm going to just go through it. And all things have we trespassed. So we understand this is acknowledgement is the first step to, to being changed, to immortality. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's what the Lord Yahweh Shai said. Repent, turn back, be in remorse, have a broken and contrite spirit. The Lord will not despise that. And all things have we trespassed and not obeyed the, thy commandments, nor kept them, neither done as thou hast commanded us, that it might go well with us. Wherefore, all that thou hast brought upon us and everything that thou hast done to us, thou hast done in true judgment. And thou didst deliver us into the hand of lawless enemies, most hateful forsakers of God, and to an unjust king, and the most wicked in all the world, 
Now, this is back during the time of Nebuchadnezzar. How much more Esau eat him? He's even worse than that guy. And now we cannot open our mouths. We have become a shame and a reproach to thy servants and to them that worship thee. Yet deliver us not up wholly for thy name's sake, neither disannul thou thy covenant. The Lord made a new covenant through the blood of Mashiach and cause not thy mercy to depart from us for thy beloved Abraham's sake, for thy servant Isaac's sake, and for thy holy Israel's sake, to whom thou hast spoken and promised that thou wouldest multiply their seed as the stars of heaven and as the sand that lieth upon the seashore. For we, O Lord, Yahweh Bashem Ashar, become less than any nation and be kept under this day and all the world because of our sins. As you've seen in the clip, war after war, our people hiding, fearing to dig up a loved one. We're, we're, we're completely done without the Lord. But with the Lord, we can do all things through Mashiach, which strengthened the thus whom he have given us as propitiation, as, as our king, as our leader, our captain. Oh, that great shepherd of the sheep, the shepherd and bishop of our souls. Neither is there at this time prince or prophet or leader or burnt offering or sacrifice or oblation or incense or place of sacrifice before thee and to find mercy. But now we have all those things through Mashiach and through what he has given us. Nevertheless, in a contrite heart, just as David said, and in a humble spirit, let us be accepted. Like as in the burnt offerings of rams and bullocks, and like as in ten thousands of fat lambs, so let our sacrifice be in thy sight this day, and grant that we may wholly go after thee, for they shall not be confounded that put their trust in thee. And now we follow thee with our heart, with all our hearts, like with all our mind. We fear thee and seek thy face. Put not uh, put us not to shame, but deal with us after thy loving kindness and according to the multitude of thy mercies. Deliver us also according to thy marvelous works and give glory to thy name, O Lord, Yahweh, by Shimon Shai, and let all of them that do thy servants hurt be ashamed, you so-called gods, you elites. You will be ashamed for what you have done to us and what you plan to do. And let them be confounded in all their power and might and let their strength be broken and let them know that thou art Power, God, the only power, and glorious over the whole world. Barak ta Yahab I'm going to go to second address real quick. We had on time. Bad, not bad. Second address. I'm going to end it in Maccabees. Second address, 15, 3. And it reads, fear not the imagination of them. So like it. Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity, which means disbelief, of them trouble thee. Now, it starts with the high bang and the lead. They don't really believe we're going to do what we do or, or get the power that we're talking about. They understand the prophecies and the coming of the Lord, but they don't really believe that. But they're going to see it. Just as Pharaoh was like, I, I do not know this God, and I will not let your people go. But the Lord wanted it like that so he can show his power in the earth by destroying them bringing them down. He's going to bring them from uh, riches and, and wealth beyond belief to nothing at all. And they're going to be less than nothing as they have always been regarded as less than nothing. All right. Let's go to Sirach. Okay. Sirach Ecclesiasticus 1, 13. And it reads, Whoso feareth the Lord, Yahweh, by Shemel Shai, shall go well with him at the last. And he shall find favor in the day of his death, because some of us are going to be beheaded. We're going to be all right. We're going to come back and live forevermore through Mashiach, Yahweh Shai, our Lord. Okay, um, let's go to the second chapter. Go to the 15th verse. And it reads, they that fear, 15th verse, they that fear the Lord, Yahweh, by Shemel Shai, will not disobey his word. And they that love him will keep his ways. All right, now let's go to the book of Maccabees and we'll end it there. Lord, we have been edified with this lesson. This has been part three and we come to a close of this uh, series. First Maccabees 2. And 40. And it reads, And one of them said to another, If we all do as our brethren have done, which a lot of our people don't want to fight. They just want to sit around. And, and just, oh, let bygones be bygones. No. In their plans, and their orders, they want you eradicated, destroyed. Okay? It says, and fight not for our lives and laws against the heathen. They will now quickly root us out of the earth. 
At that time, therefore, they decreed, saying, Whosoever shall come to make battle with us on the Sabbath day, we will fight against him. Neither will we die all, as our brethren that were murdered in the secret places. Then came there unto him a company of Assyrians, who were mighty men of Israel, even all such as were voluntarily devoted unto the law. Also all they that fled for persecution joined themselves unto him and were a stay unto them. So they joined their forces and smote sinful men in their anger. Whew, that's right. That's what the Lord is going to allow us to do. Beginning with uh, all these uh, sinful men of the earth, all these ungodly men. And soon at, at the last, we're going to come take you high banking elites out of your holes, your, your deep underground military bases. And we're going to put you to work. <sighs> all right. It says, so they joined forces, so they joined their forces and smote sinful men in their anger and wicked men in their wrath, but the rest fled to the heathen for succor. Then Mattathias, Mattathias and his friends went round about and pulled down the altars. And what children soever they found within the coast of Israel uncircumcised, and they, they were physically uncircumcised, but we're going throughout the, the coast, we're going throughout the world. Those that are uncircumcised in the spirit are now being circumcised through the spirit. Know who they are. We, we did what anyone else in our position would have done. Take action. It says those that circumcise, those they circumcise valiantly. They pursued after, also after the proud men and the work prospered in their hands. Now the work that's prospering in our hands is this ministry. So they recovered the law out of the hand of the Gentiles and out of the hand of kings now the stuff of the day, the sinner to triumph. And since I'm considered a sinner, let me complete the last one that remains by taking you damn devils out. All right, because to touch you, that's a capital crime. We're going to take you, you out. We're going to put you into captivity. You shall own nothing to be happy. How about that, clowns? All right, it says, now when the time drew near that Mattathias should die, he said unto his sons, now have pride and rebuke God and strength. Exactly what was going on in this time, just as it was then. And the time of destruction and the wrath of indignation, which is righteous anger. Now, therefore, my sons, be zealous for the law and give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. Call to remembrance what acts our fathers did in their time. So shall ye receive great honor and an everlasting name. Was not Abraham found faithful in temptation and it was imputed unto him for righteousness? Yahweh Sop, which is Joseph, in the time of his distress, kept the commandment. And was made Lord of Egypt. Phineas, our father, and being zealous and fervent, obtained the covenant of an everlasting priesthood. Jesus, which is really uh, Joshua, fulfilling the word, was made a judge in Israel. Caleb, all these things you should take as characteristics to make you great. Caleb, for bearing witness. This is what's making us breach the boundary of the gods, is keeping these same uh, attributes that our forefathers kept. All right? This is Caleb, for bearing witness. For the congregation received the heritage of the land. David, for being merciful, possessed the throne of an everlasting kingdom. Elias, which is Elijah, for being zealous, zealous and fervent for the law, was taken up into heaven. Ananias, Azariah, and Mishael, by believing, were saved out of the flame, ultimately nuclear fire. Daniel, for his innocency, was delivered from the mouth of lions. These high-banking elites, their military might, they're as, a, they're as lions, fierce. All right, but we're going to be delivered from the mouth of lions and even from Satan, the spiritual demon that, that works with them. We're going to even be delivered from him who is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And thus consider ye throughout all ages that none that put their trust in him shall be overcome. Fear not thou, so like you fear not then the words of a sinful man, these elites, these so-called gods, for his glory shall be dung and worms to today. He shall be lifted up and tomorrow he shall not be found because he is returned into his dust, his confusion, into the grave, into the ground. And his thoughts is come to nothing. Wherefore, ye, my sons, be valiant and show yourselves men in the behalf of the law. For by it shall ye obtain glory. And behold, I know that your brother Simon, all right, which his name means uh, affliction heard all the brothers that have become leaders. All right, the, the men of counsel, where we're, uh, our affliction is being heard by the Lord, and he's making us great. Just as David said, his gentleness has made me great. I know that your brother, Simon, which is Shemaiwan, affliction heard, is a man of counsel. Give ear unto him always. He shall be a father unto you. 
verse 66, and uh, it says, as for Judas, Maccabeus, which I believe Maccabee means a uh, hammer, then you have Judas, which is Judah, Yahweh, Yahweh prays or Yahweh thanks, all right, for the hammer to break in pieces, the, the nations, the rocks, all right? It says, he have been mighty and strong, even from his youth up, let him be your captain and fight the battle of the people. Verse 67, take also unto you all those that observe the law and avenge ye the wrong of your people. Verse 68, recompense fully the heathen and take heed to the commandments of the law. That's it. Deserve to live in this rotten world. Since the day I gained conscious, I haven't had one peaceful day. War after war, fight after fight. We live in constant fear of having to dig up our next loved one. And all because we did everything we could to protect our planet no matter what. Yes, I breached the boundaries of the gods because they never intended to make this world a better place. They filled it with hateful mortals just to see it rot. I stopped hoping for someone else to come fix my problems. I did what anybody in my place would have done. I decided to take action. And since I'm already considered a sinner, let me complete the last one that remains. Woo, and that's it, man. That's it. Man, they filled this place with hateful mortals just to see it rot, but not knowing that they themselves are going to be the ones to clean up this earth, which they thought they had destroyed. All right, and they're going to be nothing at all. And since we're considered a sinner in their eyes, an enemy, let us complete the last one that remains by taking you out with the word of the Heavenly Father, which is a sword in our hand. So with that, hey, Lord, when you've been edified with this lesson, giving all praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Rakakadash, by whom we do function, all right, the Holy Spirit. Double honors unto my apostles and elders at Great Millstone at the ruling well, and continue to do so. Salutations, peace, blessings unto the hopeful elect at House of David. To your brothers out there fighting this good fight of faith, keep it up. To your sisters doing that which is becoming a woman, shalom. To those that are addicted unto this ministry, I say shalom. Those when you have been edified. Until the next time, I say shalom. This has been part three to declare obsolete men while becoming spiritual men. Those when you enjoyed this series. And I'll see you on the next side and on the next one. Shalom.